Episode number 13. 13. Thinking Game Podcast. And uh, we got one for you lined up today. And um, making a podcast for the youth, telling them how to think about stuff, how to go about life, thinking, analyzing about things. So you can make better decisions than we did in our 20s, uh, 17 to 20, what, 28, 29, something like that, maybe? You can still make, you know, some of these uh, decisions. But like, that's some of the stuff we're going to go into. Just. uh, just that. So, the first uh, set of uh, subtopics is, is coming from transitioning uh, from thinking as an adult from a teenager, or like going from a teenager to adult. Yep. You know, things that matter as a teenager that does not matter as an adult. A lot of times when you know that, that, that graduating high school, 17, 18, 19, 20, you know, you kind of start working. You think these things matter, but they really don't. Kind of, you you bring those mm-hmm. habits from high school, I guess. Yeah. You know, so some people say you still acting like you in high school, like you know, you know, homecoming and stuff. All this stuff don't matter in the real world. Ah, uh, it, it was you're good. done. I mean, that, you that's over with. You know what I'm saying? Popularity to an extent don't matter in the real world unless you just want that kind of attention. But you know, if you're not in Hollywood or L.A. or something, I mean, yeah, to regular people, I mean. And that's just definitely something with uh, a way of thinking from our generation. You know what I mean? Yeah. With the popularity, uh, not really meaning much. Uh, I guess social Hollywood. media now. Exactly. Now like crazy, now it's you know? now it's kind of updated. Like um, your social media presence and your popularity could uh, lead to financial uh, gain. You know what I mean? How many followers you have on Twitter, Instagram, and things yeah. like that? How many people are following your podcast? Um, so popularity uh, can be. You know, uh, lead to your financial benefit. You and know what I mean? It can be a detriment too. We do something. It, it can be too. Like you yeah. know what I mean? You got to realize, like sometimes you're in the public eye, and uh, some of those things, uh, some of your opinions, you have to watch what you say, because um, you can uh, the popularity thing could hurt you and help you. It could be bringing you in all your money. You say the one or two uh, things that may be sexist, racist, or Did anything you hear about like that. that dude that uh, that he lost a ten million dollar job by posting a meme on Twitter. It said my N word got COVID from going to a Chinky concert or something like that. They had like Big Big Bird on the side and some Snugger Luffick is in the bed. <laughs> and he had N star 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 G A or something like that. Yeah. Uh, Dude lost a ten million dollar job for posting the meme. So like popularity can't hurt you, can't help you in yeah. the social media area uh, era, uh, yeah. things like that. So. Um, it's another thing you think that uh, you think about as a teenager, and then you get to an adult, you're like, why was I even thinking? And that don't even matter. Like, what, yeah. what is this? What and we and we we're gonna fo- this is gonna be our uh, talk point. We're gonna focus on those yeah. things that didn't matter that do matter. But <clears throat> d- despite your age, you can still very uh, much be into uh, maybe high school mindset, like uh, homecoming, the dance, popularity. You know what I mean? People can't wait to like adults play the same game. You're 35, you're 25. You can't wait to go to the club to win the best dress contest. I guess that's you reliving your homecoming, uh, being the prom king or queen, like every weekend where you're going to win the best dress or, um, you know, the sexiest tie or whatever the the situation may be. Or um, just like young kids in high school, you focus, oh my God, what's fun? Fun is going to make me happy. Let me go drink. Let me go do this. Let me go do the things that I couldn't do. Uh, at whatever time, you know what I mean? We can still be uh, adults and have those same childish mm. mindsets. Yeah, um, and here's the thing. And we, we confused that with happiness. We hung out, we did all that in our 20s, but a lot of time, it amounts to nothing, though. Like, yeah. st- stuff you just did, but I mean, you can't, it don't profit you nothing. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I had to sit down and think about that myself, like, what am I, what am I profiting by going? To the club. What am I profiting by drinking like that? What am I? 
what does it cause me? Because over a period of time, if you think about it, if I do this over a period of time, what's going to be the result from it? That's what you got to think about. Yeah, how many uh, how many weekends or how many uh, how many weekends or how many hours that went to this? They only talk about uh, how much how many hours it takes to master something or, or or how many hours does it take you know with school and developing that actual skill? Right. Uh, I am totally not against fun or kicking it or hanging out and things like that. But we're just talking about transitioning your mindset to uh, to do things. You know what I mean? Some people overwork, right? You know what I mean? And then some people overplay. Or over, you know, they have too much fun in uh, certain things. So it's all about, really life is all about uh, balancing and putting some of those childish things See, Here's the thing that I would uh, tell somebody about when we talked about the Pandora's box. Some people open the box. You got to be careful because you don't know what the outcome is. Sometimes it's just opening the box and you don't know what you're going to do, how you're going to react to it. You may open that box and you may not come back. Yeah. You know, hey, you open the box and go to the club, that you may not come back from that. Or you may come back, but you might have some scars. You may be you may come back scaved up. Mm -hmm. You know, you never come back the same way that you open the box. You never come back the same way. Um, fun is a relative term. I mean, it's all about your mindset. So people think fun is doing that. Like happiness yeah. and things like that. Uh, and I'm basing your happiness on vain things. I mean, that's, that's your choice, but I wouldn't do it. Just you got to find out what works for you. And don't be mad at the results. Whatever you pick, don't be mad at the results. That's all I'm saying. Whatever you choose to do, don't be mad at the results. You know, if you want to do that, you want to go to the club, but then, you know, things might not go the way you're thinking to if you're being honest. Can't be mad at the result. That's what you choose to do is go to the club. I know for me, my experience, went there, went to the club. Just want my thing. I thought, why? I just want my thing. I just, really, to be honest with you, sometimes um, talking to people, uh, you know, you get a girl number and she'd be like, you just don't really seem like a guy that's, that's a club guy. Like, I don't, I don't, uh, <laughs> and there's like so many signs. You can just, some people ignore the signs. I know sometimes I did. Like, I mean, you don't, just don't seem like a club guy. A guy that's, Come to the club, so I mean, and that's one of the signs I had to think about. Like, man, she telling me this, what's really going on? You know what I'm saying? So, so I don't fit in here, or uh, this, that, and the other. And we're talking, like, we're talking about opening the box. You don't know what it what it leads to. Yeah, right. one night of fun could lead to 18 years of uh, you know, child support. Uh, just things like that. You know, you have to uh, manage your risk and things like that. You think, um, of, you think about drinking, right? Some people. Open that box oh, yeah, it's, and it's you pro and deal with a life of addiction mm -hmm. off of that well, freaking that first initial drink because being addicted to alcohol is not a one time thing. It's a process, a period of time of drinking, yeah. and you try to come back from it. It's really hard. Some people, it's really they deal with that for the rest of their life, but it's all from opening that Pandora's box. Yeah, I mean, you don't know how your body gonna react to it. You don't know how it's gonna affect your composition. And if you act, if they will be honest, sometimes you can ask them like they probably don't want to even want to talk about it because you open that box and you take that one. Oh, next thing you know, you dealing with something for the rest of your life, you know, off of an initial decision or choice. You know, <laughs> so, um, everybody, nobody wants to be that one. Right. So it's five of us. Yeah. And we all drink. You know what I mean? But yeah. You you the one that just really can't shake it. You got to have a drink every night or, you know, now like you're at home drinking. Or uh, at least the whole thing with weed, like a bunch of us picked up weed, smoked it a little bit, put it down, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Go work jobs and stuff like that. And then some people cannot stop smoking it. But we ain't addictive. It ain't addictive to like 90% of us, but some of us really can't really shake it. And uh, like, like, how do we have new crackheads? Because we have new crackheads. Oh people are like looking at crack or meth and like, hey, I'm gonna try this. Like, I really wanna be high. Um, I still don't I, we don't understand it, but yeah. so that's another thing too. You got to be able to realize that things outside of your understanding happen every day. Yeah. They do. So somebody chose to pick up a crack pipe, meth pipe, heroin or whatever, whatever they're going through to make them want to turn to that. That's something they did. But the a lot of y'all are looking at that and y'all don't understand. The tough part about like alcohol is though, you imagine trying to break from alcohol and you done went to sobriety. And you're you trying to go to grocery living. shopping. Yeah, you're trying to go to grocery shopping in Walmart. Mm -hmm. and they got this big old section mm -hmm. with wine and everything right there. 
What? All the different colors and everything. Well, and not. you trying to you trying to stay clean and you riding through your car to Walmart trying and to be clean. And I do diet whiskey. I'll just drink some wine now. Like I'm not an alcoholic no more. Yeah. I just drink three it's bottles tough, of wine man. a day. Um and those are things that, you know, um due to your background, um family history and things like that. But uh, in a sense, know. it's kind of a choice you made, and I'm not gonna dumb down or simplify no, I'm not a, down. no, no yeah. a, a addiction. Yeah. Like, like you say, it's easy. All you had to do is not drink alcohol. No, no. no I'm never saying that. Yeah, I mean, because the only thing I had to do yeah. was be a genius. You know what I mean? And I wouldn't have to worry about anything. All I had to do uh, was make the best investments every time that uh, I had an opportunity. And it just doesn't work uh, that way. We all make different choices that end right. us. Uh, we all make mistakes. I make mistakes. Like I say. I used to always think I was a comedian and I would say something like, wow, why did mm. I say that? Why did I say yeah. that? Because put my foot in my mouth, put my foot in my mouth, yeah, say something I'm crazy. I'm always trying to push the edge or make yeah. uh, somebody uncomfortable. Until you get to the edge. And, and then I, oops, <laughs> and it just felt like that's the thing. It's a, Boy. It's the edge. People say, go to the edge, go to the edge. Well, you know, it's something after the edge. It's, it's a fall, it's a cliff, right. it's a drop off. And sometimes you just whoop. And it just, I think too, just instead of dealing with uh, the pains of living in the hood, I think humor was my my getaway. I guess, uh -huh. was, maybe I got addicted to being humorous. I guess being funny, but it has put me in some crazy positions too. I can honestly say that. So, but yeah, choices, man. When you really think about choices, a lot of times it sounds so simple, uh -huh. but it, it can lead to some complex things as well. Yeah, and, but um, are you, you really sit back and think about like before I make this choice, what are the results? Like, what's A, what's B, or it may be a C, D, E, F. You know, what I'm saying by making one choice can split off into three or four different things. You know, what I'm saying, and uh, being able to and slow down. Yeah, you know, and see things like before they happen. Yeah. And like I say, when you're can, yeah. when you're trying to be humor humorous and uh, or you're talking. Sometimes yeah. you can talk yourself into a situation. Boy, you know what I mean? You can <laughs> say something that really has uh, hurt somebody's feelings. And like yeah. I've said stuff and people aren't as outspoken as me. Right. And they just chose well, not to uh, to deal with me. And I ain't did nothing to them, according to me. But right. I said something about something else that didn't pertain to right. them in my mind has hurt their feelings and kind of turn you know, them off. And those people uh, could be in different positions of power. You don't want to hurt a person's feeling whether they're in a position to help you later or not. Right. You know, it's like, damn, like, yeah, this, what's hurting their learned, feelings really worth it? Yeah. Was, was that, was that joke, uh, you know, really worth it? And, uh, yeah. things like that. People, a lot of times people remember, uh, what you say because, um, yeah. oh, the negative stuff. It's so easy for people to remember the negative stuff. You don't control somebody's feelings. Oh yeah. You can do 10 positive things. The one negative, negative thing. They will live there for 40 something Boy. years and they but don't. They, won't think about the they don't remember yeah. like what you said or what you did. They remember how you made them feel. Yeah. And, uh, the, the hardest thing about that is that's something you can't control. You yeah. can't control the way another person feels Boy, or exactly. takes you. Yeah, exactly. Like, so yeah. I'm saying it like say this. this ago. Yeah. But I can't tell. I'm saying it in a very peaceful, positive way. Mm -hmm. But if you choose to take it uh, a different, a different way. Right. Uh, you can't do that. You, you've done the best thing that you can do. You've represented yourself and you can't control like how somebody's going to take it or what they're right. going to take offense to. And you mm -hmm. can speak stuff into people enough. Like I, my experiment was uh, this. Uh, I used to do this and I still do it to this day. I would say that I am one thing to people and reinforce it. And then I would do different things. Like I would say that I'm a jerk or, uh, or I'm insensitive or uh, maybe I'm a butt. Right. Um, but then I would always do nice things. Well, I would uh, volunteer with right. the kids, give people things, I always have an encouraging word to say. Mm -hmm. But instead of watching my actions and what I was actually doing, what the hell to their heart is what I see it because right. I'm, uh, you know, sarcastic or right. I'm being a jerk or something like that. They would take it uh, that way. Right. Uh, so that's just an interesting little tidbit about uh, people and just little things about your personality. Can They can put uh, people off or on. See, sometimes they focus on what they feel versus what they're seeing or what right. you're saying or e you know even doing. Right. So that's and then the change. next thing is um growing up in Southwest Little Rock, understanding, combining street knowledge with academic knowledge, you can navigate through some stuff. Um, a lot of people may not understand this. Maybe they didn't grow they didn't understand the streets. They didn't they, they didn't really understand how stuff worked. 
Uh-huh. But, you know, when you go, go to school or you live in Southwest or you playing out in the streets, you have to, every everywhere that you go has rules. Whether you believe it or not, whether you want to buy by it or not, everywhere. Streets have rules. Corporate world have rules. And sometimes they overlap with each other. Okay. Or dealing with people in the streets and understanding how things work kind of can get you an understanding in a corporate world that even though they may not act totally like people in the streets, some of the tactics are the same. Maybe less violence and stuff like that, but as far as people trying to take advantage of you and stuff like that, that definitely happens, you know, in the yeah. corporate world. So. I think the uh, the structure and the dynamic are, are the same. Just yeah. the actions, the actual mm-hmm. details of what's happening right. are different. Right. You know what I mean? Because... Uh, in the streets and hood, uh, when you uh, violate or you do something, uh, there's uh, actions that are taken. You know what I mean? Like occurrences. Your it might be your first warning, might be a verbal, written, yeah. and then final warning, and then termination. Yeah. Same thing in the streets. You might get a verbal. Somebody might come to you and tell you about something. Then they put it on paper. <laughs> then they gave you a final warning, and then they can lead up to termination. So um, with different levels, it's the same structure. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, some of them might be a little bit literal uh, in in the yeah. uh, in the street world. Yeah. Uh, so you know you get occurrences. You know you occurrences uh, in uh, maybe in the corporate world, professional world. Yeah. You know in violations uh, in the world. And like say like me, um, not knowing the details, like knowing the rules can actually like be a heads up uh, right. in the street world. So oh, it's a lot of stuff that I didn't understand, but I also knew what not to do. Right. You know what I mean? How man not what the uh, we was younger. Um, you used to hear words like you used to go to church and stuff and every now and then you hear discernment and stuff like that you didn't know what that mean when you were yeah. young but growing up in the streets we would say mm-hmm. you gotta read the situation what you walking into yeah. it's the same mm-hmm. thing but it's just the words are, the words and meanings are maybe different names for different words so we're talking words. about like we're talking about like business, church, street you know right. what I mean yeah. we got the same word or, uh, or different words but the same meaning and stuff yeah. like that like dude shady like what you mean like man uh, yeah. something ain't right about dude you know what I mean uh, church that might be saying uh, some his spirit off right you know what I mean and you know the business where that has something else to say so yeah and um reading people knowing how to understand who you dealing with like um you know, this person's a predator like a lion, you know what I'm saying? He'll eat your head off any chance you get. Uh-huh. Opportunity. And you see, and it's not like somebody told you. You actually mm-hmm. see it, whether it's in the business world or corporate world or whether it's in the streets. You just see this dude is no joke. <laughs> any chance you get, he going to bite somebody's head off, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, somebody that's cunning. A lot of times people don't realize um, manipulation, man, is it's so many levels to being manipulated or somebody trying to manipulate you. You know, Jim Jones and David Koresh, I mean, that's probably like gold star manipulation. Now, it's probably like top yeah. level manipulation. We talking about the mid level to low level people. Mm-hmm. Those are the ones that's like really dangerous because they don't stand out in front of everybody. Yeah. They don't have a sign to say, look at me, I'm a manipulator. They're, they're, they're very they're cunning. They're listening. Yeah, yeah they, people think they just, you, you can spot them out. Some people you can't. You know, and, and they get a hold of you, man. And <laughs> everybody crazy. wants to say, you know, how intimidating or, or strong or how powerful men are. But as a woman, as a manager, or oh, yeah. they have uh, so many, um, they use their words, you know what mm-hmm. I mean, uh, and things like that. So don't, you, you can't feel like you're safe in the streets from uh, from a woman or a man because he's big or because he's little. Like that little, sometimes it's the little guy that you actually have to kind of worry about, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, in the business, like you said, even in the business world, it can be that quiet guy that's not uh, doing much. That could be making most of the moves. That, right. uh, so you have to kind of, you know, look at that and um, try not to be, uh, use, you want to keep your eyes open, you know what I mean, in the streets and also in the uh, business one, world. One of the things, um, like going to McClellan, Dunbar, is learning how not to get caught up in the culture of, uh, Learning how to walk away and not care about what people think. Like if you walk away and, and that's say, a good oh, life you skill punk, as an adult. you know, you weak and stuff like that. It's like, no, nah, I just don't want to go to jail. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a jail person. I don't want to live like that. I mean, when you, from what I hear people tell me, when you go to jail, the whole mentality is, is different. Manipulation times 10, you really got to think 
everything you do, you have to think about is t- probably everything times ten, you take and you get. still may not get it right. You know what I'm saying? Um, Ain't no guns in jail either. You know what I mean? No, a lot it's of people not. like it's, um, it's, like some a lot of people think they hard like have to have to stab somebody. Like literally walk up to somebody and stab them. Yeah, <laughs> man, that's. That, I mean, that ain't easy, man. I mean, yeah. mentally, you have to go to a different place to do that to stab somebody, man. Yeah, I mean, then if you ain't got nothing that's really sharp, you gotta actually like put some into it, and you touching this dude by every time he touch him, his blood coming out. I mean, this person's blood on you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, a lot of people want to shoot people for uh, oh nonsensical reasons, yeah. and I keep my thing on me. You know what I mean? No matter where I'm, you know, I'm oh, going, yeah. but um. I just gotta, uh, I gotta uh, show you that. I didn't even bring. I got a uh, a uh, um, a gun holster belt. It's like really thick. You don't, you can't twist it, and it keeps your gun like. Oh, it's called you. You forget you got it on, man. Yeah, it's pretty tight. Uh, and a lot of people do have, you know, and a lot of people, a lot of people do have concealed carry, you know, things, and like you have to protect yourself and your family and stuff yeah. like that. Like, and if I got my son with me, I can't be fighting five people. No, nah. you know what I mean. Um, That's another thing about the streets too. You just. Um, knowing places to go and where not to go. You know what I'm saying? Like some gas station. like, you know what? At the clock, it's dark. Probably not going to the gas station. You know what I'm saying? It's like at a job. You know what? Mm-hmm. That department, the manager kind of crazy. Uh, y'all always got something to say. Maybe they, had I'm a, they had a high turnover. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, exactly. You have that very tough skin to, 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 to level up in the corporate world. You, I guess even in the street. Like, the thing about the streets is crazy. We probably will get on that later, but Man, dealing with people that you don't really know, but you have to deal with them at certain levels. Yeah. Same way in the corporate world, you have to deal with people you really don't know. You have to, but when you have street night, you can say, you know what? This dude kind of seemed like he okay, but in this situation, he may flip on me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or I can, you know, I can only trust him this far. And after yeah. that point, you know what I'm saying? He already showed me what he is. I know he'll probably do something. And I tell the young people that if you get a job like at a retail place or we're not telling you to do no dirty stuff or don't um, do not do dirty stuff. Some people do, but then when you involve other people, you know what I'm saying, you think you solid, but other dudes might not be. Man, dude to leave you on the grill, man. <laughs> leave <laughs> you of, on the grill, it's like, man, to cook. That's like friends and things like that. Uh, sunny day people. Sunday day managers, you know, uh, he got your back when everything's good, yeah. but when it's crunch time and the boss put pressure on him, yeah, he gonna throw you under the bus. You know right. what I mean? Some people are good; they just they just can't really do adversity like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. They um, so they go um. Uh, Another thing too is they don't like they're in the hood. They call it snitches, mm-hmm. but in the corporate they call it whistleblowers, or in like politics mm-hmm. or something they call it whistleblowers. They don't like snitches mm-hmm. either. That's what's the thing that's so mm-hmm. crazy. They be talking about. People mm-hmm. be hating on people talking about when they had their little video mm-hmm. snitching and stitches or something yeah. like that. But in the corporate mm-hmm. world, they don't like snitches either, though. That's the yep. part that's crazy, mm-hmm. man. So it's a lot of stuff that kind of overlap. You just kind of be mindful, man. But you can't go all the way street or you can't go mm-hmm. all the way corporate. You got to have, like Jay said, you got to have a balance. So move on to the next topic real quick. Understanding the many layers of trust from the inner city perspective. Um, it sounds like a simple word, four-letter word, trust, but it means a lot. Um, I think we both may look at it the same way, like kind of like a credit score. Yeah. You know, it's just to see, I just watch, sit back and watch and just see how this person operate. Because a person can say anything, I mean. People that say your dream like a, a furniture salesman, you know. Exactly. Man, it's the best couch in the world. You're going to love this couch. Man, you get that couch home, man, that couch feel like crap when you sit on it, man. Yeah, so this saying? ain't the same thing. Yeah, man. But, you know, uh, like I said, and they will sell you different things, um, situational circumstances you can get yeah. in. Like uh, oh, like yeah. I say, sunny day. Like, hey, this chair, this is going to really work uh, when the sun's shining. But when, when it rain, uh, it ain't going to be worth the name. Yeah, in the hood. Hey, man, hey, come hey back. Jay, let's go break in this house, man. You can do it, man. I'm gonna let you kick in the door, man. I'm gonna be on the lookout, man. No. And then <laughs> you go kick in the door, the police coming. I'm gone. I ain't even told you nothing. No, I ain't saying look out. Look, dust, you know, this is, and that's another thing too. Sometimes <laughs> people have different talents. Like I'm really like, he's really good at breaking in. Like we're gonna break yeah. in the house. He's really good at breaking the house. So if I'm gonna go with somebody to break in the house, I can go with him. But 
He's terrible at taking heat. Anytime yeah. anybody questions him, he gonna fall. He gonna bump. So you man, gotta do it. Told me to do it, man. Yeah, and he so that's what you gotta like, man. This we know he gonna be super good at breaking these houses, but if anything happen, he gonna fall. Yeah, you know most what I mean? dudes uh, that we went to school with, they got caught like Robert Banks. Somebody always cracked. They either get too greedy, uh -huh. and somebody always cracked to get caught, and they tell on everybody. Man, yeah, they man. caught us, man. No, they caught you. Yeah, come on no, They caught all of us, man. <laughs> it was him. I mean, you know, his baby mama took some of the money. Like, uh, you know, that house they bought, like, uh, they, they was, you know, like, it was clear on it. Like, yeah. chill. Uh, but, like, trust is a um, oh, man. It's a hard thing. You, uh, yeah. But there's different levels of trust. You got to, some, some people you trust in their arm's length. You know, some mm -hmm. people you can let them look closer to your chest. Uh, whether it's time and things like that. But, but time ain't really a good thing. Like how long you've been knowing somebody. It's the situations they've been through. Have they been tested? You know what right. I mean? Like and consistency honestly, and reliability. Are they reliable and consistent? A lot of people, they passed the first they passed the first test, but it's like, yeah. man, I'm never going through that again for nobody else. Right. You know what I mean? True. I ain't sitting in that interrogation room. I was like, hey, I know Mike ain't going in the interrogation room again. He stood firm the first time, but he ain't yeah. going to be putting himself in that situation. So... Uh, trust is a very uh, weird definitive thing, and um, and we can't over expect this die hard amount of trust yeah, from unrealistic from, expectations. Yeah, you know from saying? people. Yeah. Like I expect this man to give up his whole family to right. for something we actually did or something I actually did. Right. No, he not. He, he's gonna like protect his, his family, his own interests. That would be unrealistic to expect this man to put his not only his head but his his. His children's heads on the chopping block over something, you know, that I see, did. That's the thing, like, when you talk about trust, some people um, are at different levels in their lives where their mindset don't even get, like, I, I'm, I'm going, oh, I know the streets be watching, maybe not now because we, we still small, but I'll say this, right? Let's say a teenager, right, 18, 19, you get your first car, right? Yeah. You pick up a family member, or yeah, let's say family, because you most time you trust. You think a family member won't put you in harm's way. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, teenager picks up a family member. Say, hey man, give me a ride over here, or ride to work. Man, just give me a ride, man. Take this family member to a house. He goes in. He's probably in there for about five ten minutes. Then he gets out. But while you were in the car waiting for him to come out, the teenager sees a lot of traffic, people coming in and out, you know, people touching hands and stuff like that. It get kind of crazy. Then your family member come out and say, all right, man, we go back to the house. Then when you think about it, you say, wait a minute. This family member took me to a dope house. Like, this supposed to be my, this supposed to be family. You know what I'm saying? Like, what if I would have got caught? Would he would have dropped the dope in my car? You know what uh, On the simple pullover, they'll slide around in your seat like it ain't nothing. It ain't supposed to be family. But I mean, sometimes you ain't got, you, people. You ain't got no record going to take this charge. People's uh, vices or, or, or something they dealing with can impair their judgment and be like, man, I'm not going to put my family in harm's way. But sometimes people will do. In order to get to what they're trying to get to, they use somebody else, and they don't really. Or care they can about be the desensitized cost. of the cause, like they've yeah. been uh, dealing yeah. with the drugs or smoking weed or yeah. doing whatever the case may. Y'all forget that it's illegal that to be right. riding around like this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and start uh, making decisions for you, like you ain't got, like you ain't got no charge. You ain't never been in trouble, so you take this charge real quick. Yeah. I didn't already got two. Uh, well, yeah, you got you know, three. Working their jobs, right? Uh, yeah. When I was younger, working their jobs and stuff. And um, somebody come up to you and say, hey, man, you know, uh, man, they got this free gas card, man. Man, we can all use it. And I'm thinking, man, I'm not fooling with y'all because I know you're going to snitch. I know soon something happened. Something happened, happened to you. Snitch, man. Oh, 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 I might be using it too. Mike, yeah. John, and Earl. Like, oh, yeah. oh, oh they, they caught you mm -hmm. at the gas station with mm -hmm. the camera. That's, but he don't use the gas station with the cameras. I used to always mm -hmm. tell dudes, like, hey, man. We grown, we adults here, man. I, I, tr I trust you enough that you're not going to ruin your mortgage. You probably will snitch on me, man. Like, let's just, just be honest. Let's just go ahead and get it out of the way. I ain't the person. I don't want to do dirt with you. Don't do dirt with me. Whatever you do, do on your own. 
and I trust you that you're going to look out for yourself. <laughs> yeah, I trust you know it every time. Exactly. you're going to do the best thing for you. Because when they pull you in that office mm -hmm. and shut that door, mm -hmm. and you feel like ain't nobody listening, you're going to get in there and start singing like <laughs> Patty LaBelle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every time. And boy, Mike, man, Mike was in there doing this and that, this and that. Ain't and you got to think, everything. like, man, it's, oh, man. He and then come out like nothing ever happened. Mm -hmm. like, come man, through and everything. I don't know who man, it was. Happened, man. man. I didn't know that. What you say? Exactly. Somebody must have told. Boy. And it was like, man, uh, he going to be they gonna be in there like, why is he my friend? Boy. Because we work together. Because he knows my first name. <laughs> yeah, I mean. And it's a that, lot of That people. ain't your friend. Like, because we did a little dirt together? Yeah. Nah. It's a lot of people in the ground right now because they trusted somebody <laughs> and that person led them out in harm's way. You know what I'm saying? They trust this person. This person led them in the alleyway, man. They get chopped up with the chopper, man. And can you imagine, like, a person get like that and they're like, man, this was my dude. I'm about to get chopped up. This dude left me out to dry, man. You know what I'm saying? Close the door behind him. Boy, exactly. Like, man, it couldn't be me, man. It had to be somebody, man. So it's pretty crazy, man. I heard one story one time. It was an apartment complex, bro. And um, the, some dudes lived next door to some dudes that was that was selling drugs or whatever. Uh, you know what? Maybe I don't need to say it. I'm going to leave that one alone. <laughs> that I, don't, I don't know close. what was the, the outcome of it. <laughs> nah, I'm going to leave that one alone. But um, <laughs> that trust thing is crazy, man, because everybody could, could try your trust, man, and take advantage of that. Family, friends, or associates, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, can, and try that in. You got to have enough skin not to want to do harm because, like I said, as an adult, but, a lot of stuff you can do, man. You can go to jail, man. Yeah. It ain't like high school where you can you can beat them up in class or something, but then you just get a law form and get suspended for ten days. Yeah, and I mean, you know, going to hard, jail for like a month got, can change your whole. Oh life, God, man. I be you telling people all that. Like, can you do thirty days? Can you, like how many of y'all get thirty days vacation time? Yeah, even if they like. Let you just be away from, you know, work. Like, it's 30 days, either no pay or trying to come back. And you trying to handle this business over the jail phone. Boy. Like, you trying to call your your manager, Boy. director, general manager. Hey, man, I'm going to be out of the store or I'm going to be uh, not be able to open up these locations. Like, because you got multiple, like, business or you uh, the manager of multiple stores. Hey, uh, this is where the key at. Like, you have a collect call from, hey, man, uh, Roger, this is, uh, Boy. John, uh, man, uh, hey, the keys are over here and I need you to unlock the store. The alarm calls with this. Man, um, you really can't do, even if you keep, beat the charge, you get out uh, of all this stuff. Um, like, can your real job and sometimes your professional life uh, rebound even on a guilty plea? Mm -hmm. And, uh, where are we, we're talking about injured, being, man. we like, were what? talking about, uh, being, uh, about trust and stuff like that. And trust in others, you know what I mean? But, you know, um, yeah. them putting their trust in you. Like, you can't be this stand-up person to all these people yeah. all the time. You're risking and yourself you trying to be them. like trying to be trustworthy. Yeah. Like, you're trying to keep somebody's secrets on something that what didn't even involve you. They right. they involved you in it and Boy. put you in a situation. Yeah. Like, hey, man, we finna go do it. Hey, don't tell me about that. Like, this yeah. and that. Hey, hey, you think somebody would tell if we took all the computers out of the building? Like, hey, y'all know yeah. I'm working. Y'all know see me sitting right here. I ain't going to stop y'all from stealing all the computers. Yeah. But you know that police is going to ask me, like, hey, what did you see? They had to walk right by your desk to take all this stuff out of here. I ain't no snitch. Y'all put me in a messed up position. Mm -hmm. I ain't trying to lie. So, so you but you can. Nice. No, uh, man, it's not snitching. I wasn't involved. <laughs> <laughs> but they wrote they know. <laughs> they know. By your desk. But see, they put me in that position. I well, did. How you going to snitch, though? If they ask me what happened, I seen somebody do something. I'm a dry snitch. You know what I mean? I ain't finna get wet wet. But, uh, man, I seen some it's people do something. Yeah, because I have to protect myself. Like, cause I'm not, look, I'm not lying for you, bro. No, like, cause they know no. I'm, they know I'm here. Exactly. They know the, like, y'all know I'm here. I'm not gonna stop. That's another them. thing about and, like, what, But what does it look like for you to go in there and then lie for people? Who weren't, they didn't involve yeah. you in any other profits. They didn't ask you anything. You're on a schedule. You're under a camera and they do it like right, like in front of you. A, um, you don't owe any, as far as trust, you don't owe these people anything. Nothing. You don't owe them nothing. silence. They're putting you in a position, but for some reason, cause we seen them a couple times at work and they got fired and now they're going to take all their stuff. Now here's it. You remember we were talking about the street. Don't uh, trust the, me. This from minutes ago. 
Now, here's the trick. If you can understand how to get away from stuff before it escalated or before it even go there, like if they was going to steal a computer and be by your desk, you you I'm taking lunch my lunch break. break. Yeah, <laughs> lunch. Well, I, so see, I, 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 know they, I know they don't work here no more. Yeah, I, I seen lunch. I seen them pull up in the U-Haul over there in the corner. Yeah. When I see them come in the building, hey, I'm taking lunch. Yep. <laughs> or that could have gave me, like, you know what I mean? Because it's a lot of dudes in jail for just being an mm -hmm. accessory. I mean, you can see something happen, a crime happen, like a murder or something, and you can mess around and get life just by being there, not shooting a gun, by seeing it happen. And then somebody say, well, he was there, and they ask you, you know who did it? And I don't know who did it. Well, we're going to put it on you, nigga. And they, 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 they're going to try to get you in court, right? Uh, they're going to try to get you in court, yep. or they're going to try to get you in the interrogation room. Mm -hmm. um, if you lie on the street, that's one thing. I, I ain't mm -hmm. seen nothing. Yeah, this and that, you know what I mean. But you're then you like now you purge yourself for some people you don't even really know. Trying to you know be loyal to uh, loyal well, no, even to people there. that you know. Yeah. And when it's for it's like you know what these dudes probably will bust another person's head. And when they get the mm -hmm. argument, I'm gone. I'm not even gonna stick around and see. I'm out. You see them getting heated. All right, y'all. I'm mm -hmm. out. Look at the mm -hmm. time. Woo, boy. I mean, everybody. I'm sorry. I'm in, I guess I'm from kid. Uh, I know fighters, I know some fighters, and I know some killers. Yeah. If they get to argue, they're finna kill somebody. Like, somebody finna you get shot. You know what I'm saying? So, being I'm able going. to mm -hmm. recognize it before you even get to the argument, like, you know what? It's finna go down. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll catch y'all later. I just seen Duke Cousin. Y'all in the y'all arguing right here in the in the building. I just seen Duke Cousin go out to the car already. Yeah. He's a yeah. shooter. He gonna shoot. I'm gone. I'm he gonna air it out. Yeah. I'm like, he, exactly. Uh, he got a chopper. It don't really, you know, that's, that's yeah. 30 rounds. Uh, I'm finna go, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and roll Even out. in the corporate world, you just see something happening. You're like, you know what? Them two dudes, man, they're like the Grim Reaper, man. They're going around taking people's jobs. Everybody need to go ahead and go to lunch, man. That just recently happened in, uh, in, uh, oh, in our office. Um, hey, um, they started changing some emails start going around Ooh. that we're, um, that and we're changing policies about mm -hmm. the, like this and that. We're gonna make it more streamlined. Streamline means um, less moving parts, less moving people. <laughs> so you start putting it together. Um, uh, we want a more reliable yeah. uh, uh, thing uh, system. Okay, some people have been there for a long time, but they're unreliable. Right. You know. So what they start doing, they start checking off people who they can. Oh, they start looking at stuff like your, your time, your tardies, your attendance. Uh, and they say, hey, we really, uh, this one girl, we really want to keep you, but uh, in the last 30 days, you called in seven times. Boy. In 30, like, you know what I mean? Ever since those emails. And another girl said, I told them, like, uh, when them emails started coming out, they were downsizing a little bit, and they were mm -hmm. trying to, you know, uh, do more with less. Right. Um, just show that you're reliable, that you'll come to work and stuff like that, that you, you know, some fake dedication. Right. And uh, like I said, you know, she didn't do that. Now they lost, you know, a, a good employee, but she was unreliable. That's true. But the people who who now, who, uh, is, who saw the writing with on herself? the wall, would she be honest with herself and say she wasn't reliable? That that be the hardest part that people deal with. Is say, you know what, I wasn't reliable. You know what, I messed up. It's always somebody else's fault. And I, you know, what I'm you know and, I, and I and I hate to be because even person. when I messed up, I like I messed up. It was yeah. nobody else's fault. It was me. But you know, when you're younger, you get that ego. He's like, it's everybody else's fault but yours. You know what I'm saying? You know, or it can be handled like a little different. And honestly, that goes back to the child mentality because this particular person who's unreliable, uh, for some reason, they could like survive on 28 hours a pay period, like yeah, for two weeks. As I'm an adult? like, yeah, I don't like, right. honestly, I, and it made me think, like, what are you doing on the side? Because yeah. I got like real big, and this person had like a child, like you know what I mean, and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah. oh, um, okay, um, yeah, yeah uh, okay. But they, they they were doing uh, things like that, and um, sometimes, man, uh, some stuff you want to take fault in it, and you're going to get double punished. Yeah. Like you know, hey, I was wrong, but I didn't deserve that. Right. You know what I mean? So they, they and they, honestly, you're not going to be able to get used to that. And uh, what did, did you hear about a uh, uh, target? They said Target in some areas. I don't know what they didn't say what areas. They starting to, they working up to paying people like twenty four dollars an hour at Target. Yeah. And people don't realize why are they giving you twenty four dollars an hour when 
years ago, it was nowhere near the. <laughs> there was. I mean, like when they're talking about minimum, we're not talking about like use. years ago. We're not talking about twenty years. We're talking yeah. about like maybe like five or ten. Yeah, maybe last maybe year. Three. Yeah, exactly. I was fifteen to seventeen, not twenty-four. So, what do you think? You think that is um. They're going to try to give them, like, limited hours? No, even inflation. Mm -hmm. Everything's about to go up. Yeah. Because they was giving away money, you know, with the COVID and stuff. And somebody got to pay for that, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Rent probably going to go up. You probably get them letters from apartment complexes. Or your rent's going to increase by 25%. You know what I'm saying? Be ready for it. Uh, mortgage, you know, interest rates going to go up. Um, I wish... Like I said, we talked about it earlier, make a board of all the stuff you have to remember as an adult as far as bills-wise and keeping up with paperwork-wise and stuff like that. It's a lot, man. You, know, you got to be kind of write all this stuff down, man, and you don't forget. You can't remember all of it. It's too much. And we're just talking uh, like there, there's something like even with the inflation and stuff like that. Yeah. And we're uh, I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to talk about, uh, get really back to what you were talking yeah. about with keeping up with things. Um... You're, we're talking about like you know I've worked in the hospital healthcare of some kind of way uh, most of my life. Uh, we're talking about when you can't pay um, when you want to pay a CNA thirteen fourteen dollars an hour, Boy. and they are the people that are keeping your grandma uh, grandmother clean yeah. uh, that are helping you. Honestly, when I was in the hospital like um, a couple months ago, yeah. I'm strong grown man, but I need like I'm. I, it's making a business decision if I can walk to the bathroom or how, how many, like, if I, am I going to be on the floor for two hours right. when I fall right. or break my hip? So I'm making a business decision like that. And I'm, you know, strong and healthy when I was sick. But you don't want to pay somebody who's taking care of you on, a, on a, the, the most basic care for you. Not like talking about nurses who are giving you medicine and things like that that are part of your treatment. Yeah, you want to pay them 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 dollars an hour. But then you're like, you can go to Target and you don't have to see anybody die. You can stock some shelves. You can check some folks out. And now everything's self checkout. I mean, that sounds good. Why too, would man. I want to take that risk, uh, you know, with somebody's life or somebody's poop, uh, stuff like that? So you'll have some kind of active on the basic level of healthcare workers, uh, you know, with the inflation and other places yeah. playing Amazon with the market being more competitive and the hospitals not trying to keep up on certain levels. Not, uh, agencies are making a killing. Uh, with, with travel and stuff I mean, like that. Let's be honest. Retail, that's what they need people for yeah. is to make it just to make the wheel keep turning. Exactly. I mean, but the thing is, CNA job, you got to clean, be up on the floor. How do you think working at Target or Target Warehouse is going to be, bro, in retail, bro? I mean, nobody, I mean, I mean say, it, ain't, it ain't no no, thick no soul shoe that can make, <laughs> that's going to make you comfortable no, being no, up I'm, on your feet for eight no, hours. No, I'm not bro. saying, I'm not, I'm not saying one job is going to another, yeah. but I'm saying, I mean, I mean, until you've seen a person die or care for somebody as they die or, or looked at rotten bed sores, uh, I mean, I just, I mean, I'm not saying that a job at Target is easy, yeah. but you, you don't have to do CPR on somebody, you know no, what I mean, yeah. or, or be responsible for somebody's life. Um, but this, this, uh, see, the thing is, easier. too, is, um, at least I'm gonna say, at least at a hospital, if you got some kind of awareness about things, you can kind of level up. It's, it's, it's not a, a low ceiling of like, um, levels of what you can do. Like, you don't have to stay at CNA for a long time if you yeah. don't want to. You can move up. Like, some hospitals, they'll pay for you to go to school to be a nurse. And you it's like look, a five-year incentive uh, or something like that. Yeah, definitely looking at the benefits of any organization that you come to. Because you can be a CNA in a nursing home with no tuition reimbursement, no uh, advancement with health care or help with your education. Right. Or you can be at maybe a private institute or a government or state institute yeah. where they're going to help in-state tuition and things like that. Maybe a 90% discount. So you want to look at things like that. Even if you want to go into nursing, maybe you will want to get a job as a CNA cool. first to be in the... Uh, Organization before uh, hand like this. Cause Target to sell you a dream and say, "Hey, you come here. We got tuition reimbursement, but the riddle is, when do you have time to go to school working at Target? And pick and picking. Or uh, have the energy. <laughs> and, and how many hours do you have to work to qualify for that? And, and let's say they do. Change. Let's yeah, yeah. Let's say let's say you do and what you can actually the fees you can go in. So let's say the first year they they reimburse your tuition or they pay your tuition. Because you make some oh, but now you're oh, like, oh my god, it's gonna cost us uh, this much money. So let's just cut, let's just cut this person out by two hours, boy. And now they don't qualify for the tuition thing, 
your second year. You or, know what I mean? Or they say, uh, it, it it was a C average. Now you got to average like a B. And you uh, was 79.9, so we need you to have a B. So we can't cover that because it's a, you got to have a B average now, you know. You know what I mean? But they, they tell you that after, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or you, you pick your class in the daytime, but then your schedule will change to daytime because he's working at night to go to school in the daytime. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to tell you, hey, man, you, know, you got to figure it out, man, you know. But we're still time. here for me and for yeah. you, isn't that? Well, you just took that main thing exactly. uh, away. Um, and uh, But you were talking about remembering stuff, right? Uh, like, yeah. as an adult, uh, you have this list of things that you Boy. have to just regularly take care Boy. of. Uh, I have you no know, work in the hospital doing, you know, registration. Like, you know how I many, like, adults, like, I'm 28 years old. Like, people talking about how they grown. 25, yeah. 28. Some mm -hmm. people thought... They don't know their social security number. They don't know where where it is. Boy. They think they got insurance. You know Boy. what I mean? Like, um, like I don't know where my driver's I license think, is. Like, I I'm think like, some people be. I think the mind of a person. Some people be trying to get over. How do you not know if you don't have insurance? I know dude said I, I don't I, I No I know but I was he being truthful though No no he said I, I don't I know and like I said I don't And I you know no, I Did he have a job No he but didn't he don't. Oh guess what But guess so. what No no but he knew it But he knew it's social And I got on there And we looked up And then we looked it up And dude had insurance And he was no, surprised right. Like oh, oh, I, oh I'm, I'm covered Now I don't know if, See I don't know If his mama was taking care of like, This was like 28 I don't yeah. know if his mama Or his wife Or somebody else Was taking care yeah. Of that business Or whatever right. for him And filed they those applications care, yeah, yeah, yeah I mean but It's a lot of uh, Like some people like, I don't know maybe, You know like you, A lot of people Qualify for different benefits so That they don't know They uh, right. qualify for We run your social We run all these We have these programs and uh, apps that we can use uh, yeah, to find different your social man carrying a wallet as a man. If you don't have a wallet and something happened to you, you're John Doe, they don't know your name. Oh yes, most yeah. definitely John Doe. Like uh, yeah. use technology to your event. A lot of people don't want to share. Uh, I don't want to put my personal information on my phone. But a lot of times you got your phone or your wallet with you, or people will take one or the other. You know how I many people have been in car accidents or nothing like that? We got their phone, and, and we you. can't get any. We can't do it. But there's a little emergency thing on your phone, and we press it, press like the little emergency button. You can say, my name is John. My blood type is this. Call this person. Boy. Uh, like, because we don't have anybody like, in a hospital. We, we, you're sitting here bleeding, Leaking, whether boy. like shot or accident. Boy. Uh, you don't and, need more stitches to and we don't, because. we can't talk to you. Yeah. You didn't have your wallet. We get you. Your we ain't got type. no numbers. You know what I mean? So you get to die here by yourself. Cause yeah, you know, we don't have. Blood type could cost you 10 minutes. They could be in cause they don't know what blood. They're trying to scramble to see what blood type you are. They got to run a test. Yeah. But if you would have knew your blood type, I'm O negative or whatever. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they already know what blood to bring to you. you have know you, like, have your insurance card. Because you can't just take any blood. I don't know if people realize that. You can't just take no. any blood. You would die. <laughs> you would die. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, having an emergency contact, maybe a thing in your wallet or something like that, to call somebody, call your wife. Like, oh, yeah, it's blood like this and that. I'm going to be there, this and that. Ah, ah, ah. Vans erected. You know what I mean? That's why. Yeah. Why do they put your organ donor status on your driver's license? You know what I mean? Yeah. So... And then, um, but then I realize it's the fast contractor phone, whether you got it on or not. That's oh. they've been solving a lot of crimes. Oh, this phone. dude killed his, uh, he killed his wife, right? Yeah. Uh, so, but he's smart, though. He put his phone on airplane mode. He had an iPhone. <laughs> he put his phone. He put, and that's why you can't take your battery off your phone no more. Like, people wonder why yeah. you can't just flip the back off. Because you, that's, like, probably one of the only ways. Yeah. And it still got a small reserve battery they can track it anyway. But, uh, yeah. no, uh, dude was like, oh, I put my phone. We're going to put his phone on airplane mode. Dude then chased his wife around the house. So they went back to that day and to see what his phone did. Mm -hmm. And they, they could tell that he had been running around his house back yeah. and forth. Boy. Uh, and it was like, during this time of day, this is when your uh, wife yeah, estimated time of death yeah. and that you were actually chasing her around the house. Like, they yeah. knew to that point. Boy. But he was like, man, put my phone on airplane mode. Yeah, it's like, yeah, we saw you put your phone on airplane mode. Yeah. Uh, we can still drag it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, see, this turn is my location off. Uh, definitely a topic for the youth and middle aged adults. I know I had to learn this. Um, learning that, that every decision has a cost associated with it. Kind of like going to the store. You say, man, I really like those pants. Then when you pick it up and look at the price tag, like, do I want to pay the cost to get these pants? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Boy, this is Polo Purple, Polo mm -hmm. Black Label, man. Do I really want this shirt? Well, this shirt probably going to cost you $120. 
That's so, the price that's associated with So you can pay the cost or you can pay the consequences because there's ways around that price. Right. You can do a five finger discount, but see, now it's not a cost, it's a consequence. Right, exactly. And you can skate on consequences sometimes. Too. That's the cost. Goes yeah, right exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just what you call it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, and that's another thing, too. You can defer that. You can just push it back the cost yeah. of this or the consequence. Oh, I got away with it this time. You know what I mean? But that was the decision you made. So, yeah. it makes, morally, it makes it easier to steal it next time because yeah. that's, that's an easy come up. But, and see, yeah. young people, please, young people, this is one of the most important things. If you can really slow down and think, when you are young, you have to take time to think about the costs before you make the decision instead of making the decision and then see the cost. Like, man, I shouldn't have done that. That's one of the things. If you can work on doing it, a lot of stuff will start to open up and make sense for you. What's the cost? If I move this way, what's the cost? Here, here, what's the call? What's the end of this result? What's the end of this at the road? My uncle used to always tell me, when you get to the end of the road, you got to pay the piper, man. You got to pay the toll, man. Whatever so the road ride's you choose. Over. So the ride's yeah, whatever over. you choose. But well, just know, when you get to the end of the road, you got to pay the piper, you know what I'm saying? And um, being able to slow down and think before you do stuff um, can help you out a lot instead of just saying, you know what? Some people know the end of the result. They say, you know, it don't apply to me. I've been there. I've been that egotistical. Ah, oh, man, I'm better than that. I'm an exception. I'm an asterisk. That don't apply to me. End up having the same result, just a different way. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. I, I, I can say it's the way you got this the same way to maybe distribute it a little bit differently. Uh, another thing, too, to get out of uh, thinking is reactionary thinking, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something, right? Yep. Instead of be like his his keyword was before. So but a lot of times we do stuff and then whatever happened, we're we get trained. I'm gonna react to it. That's true. That's when we true. have natural and good when the better your instincts, the more this becomes a problem. Right. Like I know a lot of people say, I'm so good at writing papers at the last minute. Right. So I'm a lollygag yeah. and I'll the more success you have with it. The more it's programmed to, into your behavior, yep. so you're not priests and like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get it. And look, solving problems after they happen, when you could have avoided them, Boy. when you do that well, that creates more of a monster. Yeah. Like I know some people like, well, I, um, I like to uh, like you know have sex, you know, without protection, this and that, and I'll just handle it when it happens. Well, I'll just have the baby and then I'll, you know, I'll make do. No, you have to plan having a baby is best. Yes. And then, like, even after, you know, you find out you have an unexpected uh, pregnancy, you have to plan for that. The next step, you have to plan. But people are like, no, no. Now the kid's three and you're still playing it by ear every year. And that is doing that. A lot of young people don't realize ain't too. Right. Um, your decision says a lot about stuff that you're doing. The baby is not the bad part. Babies are beautiful. Kids are mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's the thing, the process that led up to having a kid. Right? Yes. Not, not the fact that you had the kid. It's the yep. fact that you unprotected yep. out in the game having kids. What if something else happened, like a VD, venereal disease, or STD, or even worse, you know, you get the HIV, something like that. Not even the kid. I'm talking about stuff like that. That's the stuff people don't realize. They say, well, I'm just living my life. I'm just out here doing what I want to do. And I want to play it backwards. Yeah. Well, I didn't. Well, last time I didn't. Or I didn't. Yeah. What? When you went into it, you didn't know if you would or would not. Right. Those are the those are the times before that you make the decisions. You don't get to, who, uh, jump in the fire. I didn't get burned. Look, I didn't get burned. I told you I wouldn't get burned. No, it don't work like that. You have to make yeah. a good decision. Some people make decisions before. so fast, too, though. I mean, you know, if you no, they let decisions happen. Yeah, I they mean, didn't even make it. They like let if it. Do like a do meet a girl or something. You had it, you know, having like you know five kids by four different women. You lay down with the woman. You knew you didn't have protection. You knew you didn't. You was in there unprotected. You knew you was doing that. Uh -huh. So it's like, but you know, you don't want to be accountable for you know what what was well, going anything, on. What happened next? Yeah. Or or even like oh, I had like women. This dude got five kids, right? Yeah. He ain't been with none of the mamas, five different baby mamas. And he just wanna have just uh unprotected real quick or whatever, but he's you know, this but it'll be all right though. I know myself. Uh well uh okay. Or or 
I'm gonna keep you. He gonna take care of my baby. But what about the other five? Right. You know that this person doesn't make good judgment right. when it comes to sex, comes birth truck, control, right? and stuff like that. Is, it, it? I mean, I don't believe results. a person should be Show judged on their credit is. score. But I mean, I don't know the five baby mamas. I don't want to be number six. Right. Or even with the situation with me and baby daddies, uh, I can go in here unprotected, and she says everything's straight, and I can be baby daddy number six. Not even that. Just. Not even the baby, like I said, not even the yeah, baby. Yeah, I mean, man. but I'm just around and get burnt, man. Forever. You, you know, get up out the bed, but you're still going to get out the bed with you. Just laying in the bed. You out the bed. Ah, what, what's going on? What's you know what I'm saying? Uh, so I, well, yeah, you know, or so. you feel like you peed on yourself, and it's not, and it's, Boy. it's not pee. Um, it's a little thicker than that, and it stank like, like poop or something like that, yeah. and uh, and it's a, uh, it's, now you got a, a creamy stank spot in your bed uh, because you, you know you're leaking from the inside out. Uh, that's you know, and that's that one of the important know. reasons why I'm telling you from my experience, you should wait until marriage because it's so much. Every generation get crazy and crazier, man. You really don't know a person like you think you do. If, matter of fact, just look at like if you meet somebody. Um, in your 20s, you meet a person, you really don't know them. Like They don't know themselves. Yeah, you don't know them. You don't know them, they don't know you. You don't know, you don't know Even you if you them. meet somebody in high school, you know them in high school, but you don't know what they do outside of there. Yeah, I know a lot of mm-hmm. girls have uh, different diseases in high school. Even yeah. too, but, uh, so. but they got PrEP now, right? You said what? They got PrEP, you can take that. Uh, what they mean? Uh, it's it's uh, PrEP, it's like the uh, HIV uh, treatment that you can take. Before, well, why would you even chance that? It just it that, that but that's why because it. you won't chance it. I'm not taking a chance on catching HIV, so I'm gonna take the medicine that prevents me from getting HIV. No, I don't know. Because I'm not I don't taking think a chance. Works. I don't know. I mean, I mean, it works. You, you know? Hey, I mean, of course, I didn't test it myself. I mean, well, how do you know it worked? We though? took a million vaccines. You like Dr. Know. Fauci over here, man. Don't <laughs> spread misinformation, man. Come out, it works. <laughs> you know I mean, look, hey, do your own research. I'm just I'm saying good. it's a it's an it's an option it's an uh, optional the treatment. Um, there's there's different you can take uh, prep and then there's also treatment of uh, taking an HIV that I can uh, make you love to take it. It's not rolling the dice. It's, I mean, it we, it I mean, you took the. It is rolling the dice. I mean, every time you get out of bed in the morning, you're rolling the dice. It's so true. I mean, um, when you get out of bed, at least you can cut yourself and you can eat a heal. All right, listen, but you're, you're uh, medicating. It's like taking a uh, COVID vaccine. I'm not Magic Johnson. Everybody don't have that kind of money, man. But this what I'm, But nowadays, they're making it cheaper. You don't know how much it costs. You don't know how much it costs. AIDS, <laughs> um, we worked at the hospital. They, people tell us, uh, not AIDS, but uh, HIV treatments. That stuff's not cheap. But that's 10 years ago, man. This, uh, we, it's Dude, different you, now. It, but it ain't no cure for it. You still think they're not making money off of that? Yeah, but they're making money now. They're making, it's like Look, Netflix. Hey, if you want to sell yourself a dream, that's fine. I'm totally fine with that. that that's up to you. I'm just saying, I'm yeah, treatment. You, I'm just saying there's treatment There's treatment options available. You believe that if you want to. <laughs> Let them tell you a dream, man. <laughs> We're just saying there there are treatment options. I'm just saying don't believe that. Just, just if you can avoid so you, it. So are you anti-medicine now? I'm not saying anti-medicine. I'm an anti-HIV. Not even, <laughs> I don't even want to even get close to it. Do you even have to do that? That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I understand. That's like stepping on a mine. I mean, they got to prevent them. I don't okay. even want to step on a mine. I don't even want to get close to it. Just, just keep. But so you don't want to put the armor on at all? No. Nah. Because the armor is only going to protect so much. I mean, I'm so you cover your eyes, your mouth, and your ears. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be left uncomfortable. Oh, oh man. man. Indeed, it was one uh, understanding accountability when transitioning from teens to adulthood. Now, that's one thing is tough too. Accountability, man. Oh yeah. Um, that word sounds so simple. Accountability to you, you have to not have an ego involved. You have to really be truthful with yourself. You have to be accountable. You know, girl, bust your windows out. You know, slash your tires. And then you get mad at it. It's like, are you accountable to it? Like, yeah, I sold her a dream. I made her think that it was something that it was. And she bust my tires out, slash my tires. Yeah. You know? Uh, this now, when you see some say she'll be mad, that's fine, too. But you got to look at both sides of the fence. A lot of times, people don't look at both sides. This is the saddest part about accountability. This is uh, one of the, uh, to me, it's the saddest part about accountability. You don't get to choose a person's reaction to what no, you, you did or feelings. You uh, sometimes by law, you get a limit, like you get a minimum sentence 
but there's also a maximum sentence right. that you can get. You don't get to choose that. So just because you took in the hardest step about taking accountability of your for your actions, then you have to let your consequence play out. Like, okay, yes, I did do it. You know That's hard enough. And then the consequence comes right. and you feel like I took accountability for my action, but I don't think they should have took my punishment that far. Like, I shouldn't have got 20. I shouldn't have got 20 years. Should have got maybe 10 or five uh, because I've took accountability or like with your wife or your husband, husband or with the job. You say, I don't think I should have got fired. They could have gave me a warning. I don't think she should have left me. I think she should have just been mad for a little while yeah. or this and that. You don't get to choose. You know. So just because you took accountability and you deem your actions didn't really hurt anybody or another person, um, they're saying it really did hurt and they're pushing it to the max yeah, extent yeah, of whatever. Too, uh, when you're dealing with another person, um, every, everybody's built different. Nobody. Some people will say, well, if it was me, I wouldn't make that mistake. Well, you're not that person. Everybody has a set of things that go with their personality. Mm -hmm. Mistakes, successes, good, bad, left, right, up, down. It goes with that territory. Like a person that's very organized may not make the same mistake of a person that's unorganized. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and they can be on the same level, yeah. but it's yeah, just the organization the thing. Kind of you know what I mean? Yeah. And then a lot of people there, they they look at somebody else's mistakes. You know, a person that that's uh, infidel. And say, I wouldn't do that, but you may be an alcoholic, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's like, I wouldn't um, do that, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's easy, you know it's easy not to drink alcohol, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, or, you know, like, well, well it's easy to that keep you your chicken, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Man, yeah. I, just, I just like the skin, man. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. and that's another thing people don't realize, you know, you're looking at somebody else's accountability instead of looking at your own accountability, you know what I'm saying? Which, and, uh, like, you know, I have a different, you know, uh, thought process about that. Like, sometimes we can see the flaws in others. Because sometimes we're meant to help others with their issues and help them out of something and not necessarily condemn them. Hey, man, um, I know that you're weak in this area, but I'm strong in this area. I see these strategies that you can use, but a lot of times people misuse them and usually talk about stuff like he said. Yeah. Oh, I would have never made that mistake. Well, maybe you can like tell him like some uh, some pointers about this and that. Maybe he can help you with your drinking right. and you can help him with his uh, you know, infidelity issues and things like that. Uh, talk to each other. I mean, as friends and stuff like that, I think more men should do that. Uh, yeah, you know, even like say dealing with a friend or dealing with a spouse, um, you, what was I thinking? I was just thinking a few minutes ago because you was talking about, what you were talking about? Um, Choosing no, the flaws, the flaws, yeah. right? Okay. The, the, the same thing that will attract you to a person or the same thing that'll make you be a friend could be the same thing that'll get on your nerves the next minute. Yeah. You know. Because it's different. Because yeah. sometimes different is, oh, I like you, that. But you yeah. like a person because they're humorous, but then when they turn the humor on you, it's like, oh. no, nah, I don't like that. Same thing, you, laugh, yeah, same thing make you laugh, make you cry. Same thing make you laugh, make you cry. And the same thing, like I said, with, with, uh, with men and women, like the things that men and women we complain about be the same mm -hmm. thing that it contracts. It's just the craziest thing, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, uh, I don't know, it's weird. Like I say, I love my wife. I love everything about her. You know, hey, we, I I probably cause, I cause her more trouble than she caused me, man. Being married to me is not an easy thing. And it's, it's crazy. I tell it all the time. I appreciate it for being married to her because it ain't easy, man. I, I probably pushed the line and told the pay. I mean, I, man, wherever the limit is, I, I probably get so close to it or blow through the limit sometimes. So, yeah. But yeah, man. You know, you got yeah. something to say before we move on to the next topic? No, no, no. So the next topic is the power of listening and thinking. Um, listening to sound advice to make a sound decision. Now, this is kind of tricky because everybody thinks they have sound advice. Mm. You know, uh, you have to have the mindset of the filter to know this person is telling me something that's useful or this person is telling me something that's probably going to go right in the trash. You know what I'm saying? So, a lot of times, you know, guys, it, when you're younger, I don't think, I mean, maybe some guys do realize this, but the older guys that tell us, you know, how to treat women or something like that. But then when you see them in real life, they're not doing what they're telling you, though. You know what I'm saying? 
And it's like, you know, hey, you telling me, you know, to do this, but it's like, you know, you telling me how to fry chicken, but you baking it though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. I ain't never seen you fry chicken. You baking chicken. So why are you telling me to fry chicken for? You know what I'm saying? Or, you know what I'm saying? That, that sound advice, like, you got to have a, a mindset because people can tell you anything, man. They think it's, everybody think their advice is good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I have a different take on some of this stuff. Uh, yeah. But I do, the, the, the first thing is, um, advice is like a menu, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't want it, don't need it, you see it, you can choose to take any advice that somebody gives you that you want. And you can leave some advice exactly where it is. It's just because it's advice don't mean it's mandatory that you take it or follow it. Right. You know what I mean? So pick the advice that you feel like you want. Um, you know what I mean? Sometimes you got to listen to the whole pitch um, or take some of it, what you can use. Right. All right. Um, now, my thing is when you're judging somebody's advice on whether it's useful to you, you can't really necessarily, well, you can, you can do anything you want to, but uh, you can't judge it on what they're doing. Because like, like, even with us, I mean, with this podcast, some right. of the advice that we're going to give you, we're giving it to you because we did the wrong, we, we did the wrong thing. Right, exactly. So, yeah. you like, yeah, we're telling you to fry, the, we're telling you to fry the chicken, but we baked it. Right. You know what I mean? I'm like, ah, the bake didn't turn out right, so you right. might want to fry it. Yeah. And now sometimes you get this from these old cats when they talk about relationships and stuff like that. Hey, I'm treating these women real bad, uh -huh. but I'm, to, to keep a good woman, you should probably do this because I did all the wrong see, things. Just, just see but they don't frame the advice yeah, like that. Exactly. They, they frame don't. it like they got it going together, and that's right. the same thing with with church and stuff like that. You know, I'm having issues with you know church folks and all this other stuff. You know, um, but what you have to do is like, hey man, uh, these people are people, so they they're sometimes they're giving advice from their mistakes. So don't. Uh, I don't like it when people say, well, do as I say, not as I do. You know what I mean? But some some advice kind of works like that. Well, if I made these, like, mm -hmm. I smoke crack, so you shouldn't smoke crack. Right. Like, man, this dude always telling me not to smoke crack, but he over there smoking in his cell. Boy. Well, look at his results of his life. Right. I exactly. think that's the testimony. It's like, yes. what's going yes. on with that? So, like, that's why, I, that's where I kind of, uh, I kind of stand on advice. Sometimes people will give you good advice that they cannot follow. But they're saying, hey, maybe you have the strength right. to walk the path that I didn't. Right. But this is probably the best way. You know what I mean? Uh, I think it, uh, some people don't. A lot of uh, younger people now, they ask the question, why? You know, uh, back then, a lot of people didn't question stuff. Oh, I a lot of another generation now, they ask, they want to know why. They want to know why. That's why. If, if a person won't listen, I'll be very transparent and tell them why. I'll break it down to the, to the formula where my, where my son can understand. He's six years old if I need to. So you don't do it. You know what I'm saying? I can tell you exactly why you don't want to do it. If you can stand the truth. Some people, you know, you can tell them the truth and they still do it. You know what I'm saying? Or, But like I say, it's some people that they give you advice and they still, they're not being... They don't have, you don't have, it's your choice whether you want to be transparent, but a lot of the youth now, they're really looking for that transparency instead of just hearing and hearing and hearing it. Why are you telling me to do this? And some people don't like, they don't like to be asked why. Some people don't. Mm -hmm. They don't really don't. That. Because they, they just want to be like, okay, well, I didn't question my, my parents, or I don't think you should question me, I'm your elder. But uh, that people want a the whole, game has changed. but they want an understanding of what what you're saying, yeah. and I think a whole understanding is giving somebody a complete story, not with just parts left out and things yeah. like that. Um, when you uh, apply uh, advice or apply a lesson, you right. know, because life's about application, applying uh, applying these uh, skills mm -hmm. to like you know, let's say we're lifting weights, but I don't know how to apply that to my football or my track and field or right. my whatever. Uh, now I'm just a, a strong guy, you right. know what I mean? And my weightlifting is not helping my uh, my uh, my sport or my uh, helping me get to my goal. So right. we need to explain some, hey, this is why we're doing these exercises. This right. is why we're doing this. And this is why I'm telling you the advice because I've been through through this and that. Right. Um, it's come to a point now uh, where people aren't <clears throat> taking advice uh, from their elders or their parents. They're saying, how can you tell me a mom, you have a minimum wage job, or you a uh, middle class, you know, you make thirty to fifty thousand, and you're telling me about a wealth, and you're telling me, uh, or even a parents in the projects. Mom, right. you weren't successful. Dad wasn't really successful. You're a housekeeper. Uh, he's a janitor. 
How can you tell, as a child says, yeah. how can you tell, I'm 18, how can you tell me anything because I'm smarter than you are now Boy. and things like that, you right. know, which they do have a point. You now you don't have investments, you don't have 401ks, you don't have, it. but sometimes the base stuff doesn't change. Right. Hard no. work, right. dedication, uh, you know, uh, get going to school, getting your education, right. uh, things like that, getting your education to be smarter than me. Right. Uh, I might not have like a lot of business, but I have a lot of life experience. Right. You know what I mean? I can tell you, you know, different things about your health, your, um, mm -hmm. you know, your genetics, your family history and things like that. Um, people say, uh, new was it was, um, old keys don't open new doors, but some classics work, yeah. uh, work hard, uh, determination. Stick yeah. with you know some things that are that are prosperous. If you um you keep got the same formula to keep making good grades in school, right? Uh, keep doing that formula. Rinse, wash, repeat. Right. That exactly. until you get to your goal. You yeah. know what I mean? It ain't try something new. Well, studying studying hard uh, has always worked for me, but let me try something else. So you know you get to to your degree, and then you can outdo your parents. You know what yeah. I mean? They're still telling you the right thing, even right. though they. You got a parent that didn't finish high school that tells you, hey, you need to finish high school. Right. That's good advice. Right. Even though they don't know better, they're telling you better. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah, what you do in college and what you do with your degree is kind of debatable. Some people are like, well, we can override college. You jump right into entrepreneurship or investments and things like that. Man. You know, that's fine and that's your thing. Right. But trying to say, well, my parents don't know nothing. They still stay in the projects at 50 and 60 years old, so they can't teach me nothing. You know what I mean? I'm out here. I know the same amount as you. Right. Well, they that's can still and steal that. I mean, right. you know, to some part, you're right. Because how can a broke person tell you how to potentially be rich, but they're still giving you the basics. They told you to go to school every day. They told you to, uh, to, to learn um, as much as you can to apply those different skills. Mm -hmm. You know right. what I mean? So they told you a lot of life lessons. So just because they're quote unquote to you worthless in society with their low paying jobs and uh, uh, generational curse with terrible relationship histories right. doesn't mean they can't, uh, you know, that you shouldn't respect them or they can't teach you something uh, with these basic uh, yeah. principles. Because some yeah. things are just universal. Then, like I said, I always tell uh, young people, I tell myself, is your life, once you get to about in your 30s, if you be honest and accountable with yourself, where you're at is based on decisions and choices you made in your 20s and 18. Because once you turn 18, 19, you can't blame nobody else. It's on you at that point. It's all you. It's all what you're going to do at that point. You are driving the car. You're not in the car with nobody else. It's all on you at that point. And a lot of times, when you're 31, 32, if you're in a good spot, that means you made some good choices and good decisions. If you're not where you want to be, that means, you know, you could have made some better decisions, you know, in your 20s or, you know, did some different things. Some of those things aren't astronomical things. No. Like, if you want astronomical growth, yeah, you probably should have did some astronomical. Right. But some of those things are some of those things that, that, that cafeteria lunch lady, your mom, yeah. like, she only works in a cafeteria. But she told you, uh, go to school, maybe get your degree, mm -hmm. you know, uh, get a good, uh, get a good paying job. And now you're 30 with, uh, you know, above entry level job where you're working right. your way up into a situation. Mm -hmm. Now you can say, hey, I'm 30 and I have these skills. Right. Well, your mom didn't make a lot of money, but she told you, hey, maybe get a trade. Mm -hmm. So this basic person, when you look back, they gave you uh, tools. Right. Uh, to be reliable, right. you know what I mean? To be responsible. Mm -hmm. um, because like I said, when you're 19, 18, 19, it's on you. Right. But uh, some some of our parents gave us better tools, uh, better equipment, medical parts, better parts to the vehicle of, of life, right. who uh, better prepared us after 19 to be able to do something. Some of right. us was at 18, they were just out. Their parents just kicked them out. Yeah. No real advice, no support, you know what I mean? No nothing. Yeah. And they had to figure it out. So they're still in the same world as us and they're still responsible for all these things, but they just don't have as many tools as somebody else that was uh, maybe a two-parent home, trust fund baby, right. or or just even who were just taught simple things like discipline. Right, exactly. Then our next little line is uh, being able to think past where you are in the current time. A lot of times things happen fast, like say a situation happened at your job or something. 
I know some people call them hotheads, mm -hmm. or they they you know they they get it, they have a temper, you know what I'm saying, and they and they snap, and then you know you mess around and lose something, or you may do something on accident, or you know you have to you gotta have a different kind of skin when you start working in the in the world. You gotta have a different kind of skin, and people come at you with different angles. They poke and prod you in different ways, and being able to think past that and say, you know what. This person might not even be around me in the next five years. I have to tune this person out because positivity has to stay on my mind because negativity in my mind don't mix. I may do something I don't need to do or want to do. You know what I'm saying? I definitely will. And especially yeah. when you know uh, sometimes what you're capable of different things. But uh, I think something that helps you think in the now right. is going to be very, uh, um, I don't know, kind of. Uh, Contrasting, you know, I guess seems like it's going against each other, but thinking about your past sometimes. Um, you can reflect. On yeah, your past like, to make um, better decisions. think about this. Yeah. Like, say, um, people that was on my nerve five years ago, I ain't seen them. I ain't heard from them. That's true. They don't affect me anymore. Right. So I can apply that knowledge to the people that's on my nerves right now. Right. Once I get out of this job, these people will no longer be around me, and I'm about to make a decision that's going to permanently have other people in my life. Right. So, that helps you uh, think in the now because I've got through situations like this before. So I'm going to apply that past knowledge to this current situation. Right. Um, and man, sometimes we just really want to get out of a situation so bad that we don't look forward. Right. We don't look too far forward enough. Like, you know what I mean? Whether it's somebody made us really upset at work right. and I just need to get out of this job. Well, you need to kind of try to find your next job first. You know what I mean? Or you need to like look in, um, what benefits you're going to actually keep when you right. leave this job or even like even your personal life, emotional stuff. You know right. what I mean? Uh, uh, the thing spending a lot of money. When you, when you, I didn't do it when I was younger, but as I started getting older, I started thinking about it more. When you get a job, you should always think about, is this long term or short term? Is this a lily pad job to get me to the bigger the bigger lily pad, or is this something I'm gonna stay at for a long time? Well, most jobs now they don't give raises like they used to. You can go to a job and be locked in with that same salary for five years. You want to stay there or twenty? It's up to you. Totally up to you. Or some jobs you can gain experience that you wouldn't get at another job to leap to another lily pad. Mm -hmm. Um, like say working in IT, certain jobs give you let you do certain stuff. Some jobs give you free reign, let you learn everything if you can uh, handle that. And some jobs you do specific things. You need a little bit of both. You need to be able to work on everything sometimes, but sometimes you need those specific skill sets so you can build your resume. And um, you got to understand that by going into this job. Like if I work here. I'm going to work here for this much amount of time to build up my resume, get this experience. And then after this certain amount of time, I'm going to go ahead and start looking for something else. It's already in my head planned out. Now, I'm not going to tell my job that. I'm not going to, you know, so I didn't tell them that when I was working at the little small company. I didn't tell them that. Oh, yeah, you're going to give me this job because you don't know what they're thinking. They may be bringing you in for a certain amount of time. That's why you have to, it's a chess game. You got to think. That may bring you in for two years. Yeah, we're going to yeah. bring this guy in for two years. And you're you planning your life. You, you're basically planning your retirement, and yeah. they're only going to bring you in for for mm -hmm. two years. They you know what I mean? Yeah. And sometimes, like, you know, you're talking about, well, I haven't got a raise. Um, I'm getting very small raises or I haven't got a raise in five years. But that five years wasn't wasted time because that right. five years is going to get you so much money once you put it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? On your resume right. for this new job. Well, I have. Then you uh, may meet somebody. You mm -hmm. may network and meet somebody that uh, yep. you know can get you and, and connect you to somebody else. That's another thing. Learning how to talk to people outside of who you deal with all the time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Being able to, you know, talk to another race or culture. You know what I'm saying? There's another thing you got to learn how to deal with too instead of just dealing with that 98%, like we said, McClellan. It's dealing with 98% McClellan in Southwest, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. everybody you meet not going to be from Southwest. They don't even know mm -hmm. nothing about Southwest or how it roll. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand how they roll because you're in their world now. They're not in your world. You're in their world. And they play by a whole other set of rules. And you have to be able to think through that and understand. And sometimes you got to learn on the fly. Oh, they move like this over here, so I need to kind of 
you know, think about what I'm doing over here because they move a little different over here. You know, yeah, so. and like I said, like thinking, you know, uh, reacting right now, but also thinking about the future. You know right. what I mean? So we got to uh, be... Um, Couple steps ahead, you know what I mean. Uh, when you go through stuff, and it's easy. When sometimes maybe professional or mm -hmm. emotional, but you don't think. Sometimes you just want to be out of that high pressure yeah. or negative situation. Yeah. Sometimes positive situation we can look in the future because we're yeah. thinking about prosperity. Right. But sometimes we in the um, we in despair. So we're right. like, what's gonna make this pain go away? So I'm a drink, right. you know what I mean? Or I'm gonna spend money I don't have, right. you know what I mean? Or I'm going to uh, whatever your vice is. Right. You know what I mean? You can be going through a divorce, you can be going through a layoff, but um, it's what you think in that moment, like, oh, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna cash out my 401k right now? Right. Well, do you think you're gonna be able to get another job? Probably so. You're probably right. gonna get a, a job. You know, do you wanna start cashing out a bunch of your other investments? No, right. we're gonna leave those investments there. It's gonna be a little rough, but no, we need money. No, you just wanna get that feeling of dread, that Boy. feeling of uncertainty off of you so bad right. that you burn future bridges to, um, to warm yourself up today. Right. You know what I mean? I need firewood. I need I need to be warm. So you're gonna comfort yourself. So you know when when things like in life uh, happens, uh, whether it's layoffs, uh, professionally, or whether it's divorce, or whether it's uh, you know or death in a family, man, right. uh, uh, losing a kid, uh, losing a spouse, uh, you know what I mean? Losing a sibling, mother, or something like that. Yeah. Could have you in bad, uh, you know, situations. Sometimes you have to manage uh, their investments. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because we say tomorrow your dad dies. Right. Well, he had three properties. You yeah. know what I mean? You had two brothers. Mm -hmm. um, you have to make decisions right then, mm -hmm. but they're going to affect the future. Right. They can affect future wealth. You know what I mean? Uh, but then his taxes come the next year because you sold it. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's so many things that you have to think about. Right. Uh, but you don't want to deal with the feelings of losing your father. Exactly. But you still have to emotionally well, deal with. Stop. Yeah. yeah, it really don't. And yeah. and the money, the assets, and those bids, those uh, decisions that need to be made, still need to be made. And we understand that a lot right. of stuff is hard. That's why I mentioned a couple of different scenarios. Because they're like, man, oh, I always, because we always smart. Everybody's always right. smart, right? I always make the best decisions. Um, no, nah, but you don't. Like, cause it hurts when your mom dies. So like, oh, well, that's different when man, when they, when they get my mom, my mom, my mom, my mom moves my heart, but you know, and then you're crying and stuttering things like yeah. that. That's how um, adversity hits you. It's the thing that hurts you the most right. that personally affects you, and those things are gonna happen. Like, yeah. cause you know, like my heart's protected or my my money's protected. It will take this perfect storm to affect my money. That, right. is, that's what's gonna happen. Yeah. Perfect storm every time. Yep. And then our last topic before we close out is being able to learn about yourself in the process of life to make better decisions going forward. Now, that's one thing I can't say it was my 20s was a total waste of time because I learned about myself. I just did a lot of wasteful things, mm -hmm. but I learned about a lot of stuff about myself. And I'm still learning about myself now mm -hmm. in 38. Like, I'm thinking about, bro, like, you you have to learn how to treat women. If you don't learn that, you try to do your own ideas, it's probably going to be distorted unless somebody... And it's not natural. Some, some people can do it naturally, some people can't. I, I, would, I couldn't. I had to learn how to do it. We have to treat I'm still learning, being married. Mm -hmm. I'm still learning because, you know, in our 20s, we didn't have that older thing to say, this is how you need to do stuff. We just did what we want to do on our own. You know what I'm saying? And then do one to other thing is weird because they want different things. Yeah. I can treat her like I want to be treated, but she don't want to be treated like, yeah, right. like me. Because she's not judged. Right? <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. So that do one to other, do me. nice things. Right. Well, you'll do the things that you might like, but there's not. it, it doesn't work. Like right. it doesn't translate. It doesn't like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Knowing, oh God, knowing yourself yeah. uh, to know your actual uh, wife or mate. Right. Uh, something I learned about myself. Um, I like, I work uh, inside out, right? So right. I have to take care of my house first before I even start taking care of professional. Learn, I, it's hard for me to learn. It's hard for me to focus. It's hard for me to do anything when my house is in chaos. Yes. And it's the same thing. It's hard for me to learn new things if emotionally, if I'm depressed, if I'm sad, if I'm hungry, if mm -hmm. I'm if this ain't together. I can't help them. I can't help my son. I can't help yeah. other, but learning like, Hey, I have to start to get stuff together. You know what yeah. I mean? And building a business. 
uh, managing my finances, if my house not straight, you know what I mean, spiritually, emotionally, uh, I'm be, that's what I'm going to be focused on first. Yeah. And then once I get that foundation, I can build on top of that. And then I'll set up my personal yeah. education, uh, you know, financial and stuff like yeah. that. And I just layer it like that. Uh, but when something that, but I know that about me, I have to have yeah. a strong center and a base. You know what I mean? I'm not one of them people that's going to be riding on the inside trying to, you know, uh, grow and prosper others. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and shower them and get, yeah. be this and that. I have to, uh, I don't know. I don't think it's selfish. Yeah. I just think I'm, I'm not really not going to front with you. I got to have my stuff together before I can really get some stuff. And that's stuff I know yeah. about myself. You know what I mean? I give better advice when I'm in a place of peace and emotional uh, stability. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. If I'm emotionally unstable, I'll um, blow money and a lot of my bad habits start to show out. You right. know what I mean? Like I start to bleed into certain areas. But when I'm stable, I make better uh, money decisions, investment decisions. I give sound advice. I process things a lot better. Yeah. But that's just something I know about uh, me. So my space has to be settled first. Right before I can uh, really be productive in any kind of thing. But that's something I know. Yeah, I think for me, I think is that's probably why I'm so straightforward because sometimes, like, uh, what you're saying, it makes total sense, but sometimes with life, it, it, it's like it's never, it's not settled like you want it to be. Mm -hmm. But you, especially like with kids and stuff, you still have to have a level of stability for them, even if stuff is crazy, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Cause they don't know what's going on, mm -hmm. but they still want the lights to be on when they turn the lights on. Yeah, almost. They still want yeah. the happy meals when they want the happy yeah, every, meals. Yeah, every time. You know what I'm saying? Or they want the, everything. And you know? like I say, losing your dad at a young age, I think it just I had to be a rock early. I had to learn how to be a man a little bit earlier, probably than than what's the typical time for a kid to learn how mm -hmm. to how to you know, man up or whatever. And it kind of taught me a lot, cause like I say, the world don't. The world don't care. Like it really don't. Man. Most people don't even know. Like did I work mm -hmm. with? They don't know my dad died when I was in sixth grade. They don't know yeah. that. All they care about are you gonna come in here and do your job? Exactly. When we pay you to do, are you gonna come in here and do it? Are you gonna be on time? Mm -hmm. Are you gonna be reliable? Are you gonna handle your business? That's all we care about. All the other stuff is hogwash. They don't care about that. And that's why I say it's helping. You can't wear your feelings on your sleeve yeah, in the exactly. corporate world. They don't care. It's all about what they pay you to do. Yeah. Uh, can you do the job? So and what and what it takes for and like he was like the whole thing was like, yeah. you know, really kind of knowing yourself and what you thrive in and work work right. well uh in. And like when I talk about, you know, being centered and, and taking care of myself, yeah. that's when it comes to growth. I don't right. like to grow well, I'm sorry, I want to grow at all times. Right. But I notice that it's not as uh my uh, my foresight, you know, looking into the yeah. future. When my stuff ain't together, that's yeah. limited. You know what I mean? My yeah. growth is limited when I'm not, you know, center. I'm not talking about perfect situation. You know right. what I mean? I'm not talking about uh, money, buku. I'm just talking about, you know, um, just like, you know, somewhat like mostly having my feet kind of in the ground. You know what right. I mean? I'm, I'm not talking about being totally prepared because you'll, to wait for a perfect situation, you'll never yeah. move. You know yeah. what I mean? You'll yeah, never. Definitely. No, so I'm definitely not talking about that. I'm just yeah. like, you know, talking about, uh, I can't be falling back, getting beat up, you know, in a situation, right. I to, you know, in a stand your ground uh, uh, type situation. And even if you know that is you, that, that can be similar to me. Other people don't necessarily, like your professional life doesn't particularly care. So you still yeah. have to produce. You still like, you might not be growing, but you have to, I have to earn your key, me, some, period. I think as I'm getting older, sometimes in order to gain, sometimes you have to take a loss. When mm -hmm. you're young, you don't think about that. You just want to gain, gain, gain. You don't want to lose nothing, no ground, no nothing. Sometimes you got to take a nick in order to get the bigger cut. You know what I'm saying? And understanding that, like what a deal is, like the deal, or Sometimes losing is not always a bad thing because if you're always winning, how do you know what you need to work on? You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And, um, like choosing different fields, like your career and stuff like that. Finding something that fits you. Like if you know you don't want to be up on your feet all day, or you know your body can't handle that, why would you work at a retail store and be a cashier? When they all they do is stand up at their cash register yeah. the whole time. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you do that, your kidneys gonna wanna jump out your back. Why would you 
want to do that. You know, learning that stuff about yourself. Yeah, at least planning to be like yeah. happy. Let's say your plan is to work a job that you like, you like to say working uh, in a factory where you're walking around and stuff like that. Yeah. How is that even a part of your plan when you hate that type of stuff? Right. Like you get to choose your plan. So let's choose something that you like. You know what I mean? Yeah, another um, thing is, uh, you have to learn about yourself first before you take on another person, bro. Uh, try to yeah, that was know, gonna be a spouse. Him. You know, if you don't know about yourself, how do you even know what your opposite is <laughs> if you don't even know what you are? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> how do you know how? what to what to go after? You this kills me as yourself. well. Like, you don't know what makes you happy, but somebody else is supposed to make you Boy. happy. Boy. Like you your wife is not doing this and that, she's not making you happy. Well, what makes you happy? Oh man, I, I, I like traveling. I like I like to eat. Like you don't even know. You're just wanting somebody to provide you this lifestyle that you haven't even researched. Did the work for yourself to think about those in things. General, so people, yeah, not yeah. Because I mean, people take this so literal, but they don't understand. These are the basic foundations of thinking. Like, do you know what makes you happy? Like, generally, do you know what makes you happy? Like, what? If you're having a bad day, can you do something that can like, man, I do this. This is going to make my day that much better, you know. Mm -hmm. Some days I'll be at work and I just leave the desk and go walk around campus at Eula or something like that and just walk around, kind of just kind of get get out that desk, keep from uh, my back or wind up or something like that or, you know, take the kids go get ice cream or something like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, what? Because sometimes people want you to figure out, but it's like, it's so much simpler if you can just tell me about yourself, like what makes you happy, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes- And now we're talking about like, I want you to figure me out. Uh, that's something you have been with you for years. You haven't figured it out, but I'm supposed to figure it out? See, or somebody another, else? Here's another thing too though. Um, the communication aspect of that. Mm -hmm. Like if a person tells you something, they may think if I tell, if I tell, this person is, they're going to think I'm a weirdo, so I'm probably not going to tell them it. But then now you're just depriving yourself. Like, And, that, and it's also their fault like because you a, didn't tell if them. If guy A tells his spouse A, it will make my day nice if you just tickle my feet. But he don't want to say that because he's going to say, you're a weirdo, I'm not doing it. Now what happens from that point on? You gonna think I'm a weirdo now? Yeah. You gonna think the spouse, not me, but uh, no, no, guy, you think no, husband no, A guy. and wife A, husband A, is wife A gonna think he a weirdo now because he asked, <laughs> because he asked her to tickle his feet? Yeah, on one you know conversation know? about tickling feet, the communication that, that, part that, of the you spouse know? A had, uh, I mean, the wife A had yeah. about something in the paper. Like, now I can't tell her I want my uh, my feet tickled, right. and um, he never says anything about it. Right. But now he blames her because he's not getting his feet tickled. Right. Something you never said to a person. Exactly. Uh, or never expressed. But it was, uh, like I say, it could be very, some of the simplest stuff is some of the hardest stuff. I know about people. me, people is just weird because I tell people stuff about me to me like, you go to Taco Bell? Nope, can't eat Taco Bell. My body mm -hmm. does not like Taco Bell. They don't believe it. Like, yeah, I, like, I don't care if you don't believe me now. I'm telling you about my body. I know my body. I think if you, I should, I think you should Bell, try it again. You know? I go to Taco <laughs> Bell, eat it upon about five minutes, my, my stomach gets <laughs> Sound like a Nemesis song, man. Drop the bass. You can just feel, <laughs> feel the bass. Hit. I mean, I wish I could eat something like that. So I just got to flush my system out, detox. Um, but, you yeah. know, there's a lot of things, uh, like I said, about learning yourself. And um, and everything works together, man. You're not going to have a terrible home life and then have a successful uh, business life. You're not going to have a successful yeah. business life. Have a, like, it's going to, those things are going to run together. So knowing yourself is uh, very important. It takes work. And you anything. Know you got to be um, honest and accountable. It, you know, it takes work. It does take work. And, and, and tell it to yourself and then be able to tell it to others. Yeah. That's why we say tell it first, but you got to be able to tell it to yourself. So get that together. And I guarantee uh, being, you this, if you know yourself and can explain yourself, like sell yourself in an interview, that's kind of what selling yourself is. If you go in an interview, like I went in an interview one time and said, look, I know about IT. I know about this stuff, but am I, am I the Wizard of Oz of IT? Probably not. Because I don't know your system, but if I learn your system 
things started to come together, but I'm not going to come in here and try to change the world. You know what I'm saying? No, I ain't doing all that. But it's all about how you sell yourself. Like, But you got to know yourself before you can sell yourself. Because you don't know what you're selling if you don't know yourself. And please, I'm going to tell like kids, adults, uh, whatever you are, please get out of the thing where you're saying, I shouldn't have to explain myself. I shouldn't have to tell somebody else what I, what I want. Uh, what, what do you think communication is? Yeah. Uh, how do you get your goals? How do you communicate to somebody, hey, this is what I want, this is what I require from a job, right. this is what I require for myself. Right. Say it to yourself. Right. Stop feeling it for you. Well, I feel like I need this. Well, what, what is that feeling? What is that? What, like, tell yourself like what that is because you, at the end of the day, is your, um, is your responsibility right. to get those things that you want or those feelings or those needs met. Right. If you can't communicate that, like if you go to the, if you go to McDonald's and you want a, a Big Mac, but you don't know what a Big Mac is called, you gotta be at least better to describe it. You right. know, it's that thing, uh, two all beef patties, the special sauce, lady. Oh, you're talking about a Big Mac. Yeah, exactly. People will be able to, oh, I, I know what you're talking about. Once you start to try to open your mouth or articulate those feelings, try to turn those uh, feelings into words or actions or <laughs> colors or before, something where you can actually uh, describe. Before we close, this is the, we talking about communication, like going to the drive through Can you order something efficiently with, without, like you've been, some people been going to McDonald's for years, but still struggle like, uh, not talking, I'm just saying like, if you order a Happy Meal, can you order a Happy Meal efficiently? Like, you mean, let me get a plain cheeseburger, Happy Meal, extra fries, Dr. Pepper, order done. Or do you have to say, so what come on a Big Mac? I mean, what come on a Happy Meal again? What? Do you get apple slices of fries? Like, once you understand I want apple, I don't like apple slices for myself. Yeah. I don't do extra my, fries. My kids do extra fries. They don't too much care for They was wasting those things, so. Yeah, he but, don't eat them every time, though. Um... But like say he's right, or people who are doing, I want a number one. Well, our menu options have changed. Uh, you know, it's the burger, it's the bigger burger. You know, yeah, it's yeah. not, you know, the bigger burger was, was one. It's right. not the cheeseburger, it's the bigger one. With right. the sesame seed, you mean the quarter pound of stew been ordering number yeah. one? Is this whole thing? Exactly. So, I mean, it's just different things. It's better to articulate and stop expecting people to know what you mean. Boy. Like, you can't go to works and be like, well, I want a number three or, or this and that. Like, no, you, if, if you don't know what I mean, I can explain. Like, when I want yeah. something, yeah. Uh, uh, and I'm, I'm trying to teach my son that, like, if you mm -hmm. want something, you say this or that. Like, well, we understand you at the house, right. but other people will not maybe they understand won't. you. So yeah. you have to say, uh, I want this. Right. I want the number three. Well, the, so you want this? Yeah, that, that is a, that's the three, that's the chicken nuggets with, yep. the, with this, with the that, and with this. So you... So you won't be uh, disappointed. Your expectations won't be met because anger is just your reaction to an unmet exactly. expectation. And sometimes we're setting expectations for people, it's and we had, and it's only unrealistic because you couldn't express yourself and right. what it is you wanted, and you've hurt other people's feelings right. uh, about that. And I can say from like you know being single and uh, like doing stableness. Uh, my recovery was faster. My financial right. recovery, my, my 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 physical, emotional recovery was a lot faster. But now I got to make sure, like he's straight, that we right. got a whole house. Boy. Not not just like you know what, um, you know what they got to cut the lights off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or they got to cut. So what we got to go without cable for a minute? No, right. no, I can't do that now. Right. Like you know what I mean? Because like it's like you said, man. I can put gas. We will get a check, put gas in the car, buy some chicken, Boy. some bread. And for two weeks, Boy, make that's work. what we gonna eat. You know? yeah. But I'm, I can't do that with my son now. Right. My recovery ain't, you know what I mean? Cause I could do that for like a month, two months, and then yeah. I get my money back to where I needed to, and I won't make those mistakes again, but right. I can't do that with my son now. Boy, for real. So my, I had to think further in the future, right. because my recovery is gonna take a lot longer. Yeah. And yeah, guys, we finna close out this thing, man. Cause we both finna get ready to go to bed, man. Boy. You know? <laughs> Well, yeah, man, stop by. Give you that episode 13. Put the sign on out this thing. You know. Yeah, definitely. If you guys have any ideas, anything you want us to talk about, any questions, go ahead and yeah, come in. Hit the with comment section, thing. yeah. We're open to everything. You know what I mean? Uh, we're nice, peaceful. You know what I mean? But if you want to argue, we will. You know Thanks what I mean? for all who supported. Yeah, we're definitely. See, we know how to debate with each other, but it's not serious. It's kind of like Skip and Shannon. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking at 
Yeah. Love them. Not on their love. One day. Yeah. One day. I'm like right there with y'all. But uh, We may end up making a debate show one time. We're trying to get this studio set up. <laughs> we, we're getting there. So. And we definitely don't want to spend all the time arguing with each other because we'll do that like all oh, yeah, day. So, all time, uh, yeah. you know. But, but yeah, thanks guys. for the support, guys. Yeah, thanks for the support. Like and subscribe.